slip sliding away slip sliding away you know the near destination the more you slip sliding away I know Wore his passion for his woman like a thorny crown. He says, Dolores, for well, I live in fear. My love for you is so overpowering, I'm afraid that I might disappear. Slip sliding away, slip sliding away. Hello my friend, so happy to see you made it here today because as always we have gathered here in the name of Jesus Christ, glory be to God, he is alive, he lives, enjoying a, a beautiful sunset here above Ray. Ray, Colorado, and uh, I guess I just wanted to pray for you guys. Heavenly Father, we love you and we thank you. I love you, Father. I love you and I, and I thank you, Father, for all the protection you've ever placed around my life and, and the good things you, you place around my life, and the good people, as few as they are. <laughs> I thank you, Father, for, for what I got. And it ain't much, but I still thank you for what I got. I thank you for my mother, whom I love very much, uh, an absolute pillar in my life. And uh, just pray that you'd strengthen her, you'd protect over her mind and wisdom, that you would protect over her sensitive spirit, filling her heart with some sort of joy, something good, feeling her mind full of hope and a reason to laugh once in a while. Pray, Father, for a whole family. We struggle from time to time with the tests and the trials of life. I know you would never tempt us, but our own disobedience tempts us all the time. So we thank you, Father, for your assurance, for your love, and, and your grace. I thank you for your guidance. I, I believe you guide us and you lead us. So surely you've guided us and led us right here in DeVray, and so I thank you. There's not a place I have ever felt more happy than being able to wake up each and every morning there at our Father's house of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you for allowing us to be here. Thank you, Jesus. I'm always so grateful for all the blessings I have, no matter how tough it gets, no matter how bad it is, I, I am absolutely blessed and have every reason to be thankful. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. And amen. Thank you guys for watching and, and listening to the Bible videos I put out. They, 
put forth a lot of effort into studying the Bible and, and dedicating my life to the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is the good news. The good news. The good news is the foundation of our salvation. And I enjoy bringing that news to you each and every week and I hope you appreciate it. There's said it many times and many times over that, you know, the world really makes me feel as if I, I have no value whatsoever. And nobody values the work I do. Except for me. <laughs> and I value it because Jesus has revealed to me how precious it is. How precious your salvation is and how important you are to the Lord. And I don't promise you riches or a life full of prosperity, that, that's something I, I have no idea anything about. I, I've never had a life of riches and, and worldly riches and prosperity and money and things have never been easy. It's always been a struggle. The closer I come to Jesus Christ, the, the harder and the more I want to work for the Lord, the more difficult the challenges become. And in that, I thank God, I thank Jesus for being my strength, giving me the strength and, and the courage and, and the hope within my heart to wake up every morning to want to continue, <laughs> to want to keep going. You know, it's, it ain't easy when you don't have the encouragement to go and to keep going and to keep trying and to keep speaking and, and to value strangers more than you value your yourself that isn't easy especially when there's nobody patting you on the back <laughs> and telling you what a wonderful job you're doing those things don't happen and as much as my parents my family love me that part of their life they struggle with. They struggle to show affection, love, and encouragement. You know, that's something I've lived with all my life is uh, a, a father who shuts you down in every which way you, he can and uh, And I don't know why. I mean, his dad was was the biggest creep on earth. You couldn't get a worse father or meet a worse human being than his dad. And the older he gets, the more likened unto his dad he becomes. And, and he hated his dad. And and yet he's just like him. He wants everybody to be stupid and, and he'll never accept wisdom or, or smarts outside of anybody but, but himself and if anyone presents him with a little bit of wisdom or knowledge he immediately attacks it and tries to break it down and that's something I had to live with all my life you know I'm, 49 years old and in my dad's eyes you know I'm 12 <laughs> and I'll always be 12 14 years old and and uh, I could only imagine if he had to put up with, with the himself his dad because he left his dad when he was 18 joined the army and, and absolutely abandoned his family 
because of how rotten they were. And if he had to put up with his dad and his voice and his negativity and his constantly stomping you down in the ground to make you feel worthless, stupid, and uh, like a little kid all your life, I, I could only imagine what uh, what he would have been like, you know. He only put up with, with that until he was 18. I, I still put up with it, even at this age. And uh, I think people truly underestimate the depths of the forgiveness <laughs> that, that's within my heart. And, you know, lucky for him, lucky for him, my dad, I'm a person of very strong integrity and character and I don't allow myself to be valued or, or judged through his disappointments or, or uh, willingness to convince me, to convince me that I am stupid. <laughs> I refuse to, to allow him to define who I am, and, and I think that pisses him off. <laughs> what defines me is Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that might be why I am in it so heavily. You know, you need good encouragement. You, you want uh, some hope in this world. Especially when, when you're in a world full of, of negativity, negative thoughts, and, and uh, you know, when, when you're a 70 year old man and you can't allow your 40 year old son to be smart because, because it, it, it attacks your manhood, your, your value. You, you, you got some real strong personal issues and uh, you have that and you have to deal with that and there's people many people that do have to deal with that I'm not alone get yourself in the Bible get yourself as close to Jesus Christ as you can get and you do that through the word it is your saving grace. It will save you, it will strengthen you, it will keep motivating you and, and moving you forward because many people, and atheist people, people who don't believe it, will always say, you know, it, it's just a book. But it's not a book. It is the living word of God and it'll speak to you. And people who say it's just a book are people who have never read it, who never invested any time into it. And that's how they can say that. But for me, it is absolutely the Word of God. And it speaks to me, and it speaks in volumes, and, and there's no other book on earth, there's no other writing in existence that is as powerful as the words that are in the Bible. They are absolutely dynamite and, and power. I think Paul used the Greek word dunamis, <laughs> like dynamite. And, and the Holy Spirit is a, absolutely in, in empowerment. And, and the empowerment comes from knowing. And where did the knowing come from? God convinced me. Jesus Christ convinced me that every word in the Bible is the truth. There's deep truths all throughout the Bible. And every bit is a, a, a great manuscript to guide your life, to lead you, especially when you have no guidance or leadership encouragement from the people around you.
is a stable resource. Something good. <clears throat> I love it. I love the Bible. I love reading it. I love talking about it. I love teaching people about the good things that are in it. So I just wanted to remind you that if the people around you don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. <laughs> At least find you handy. Dedicated my life to the gospel of Jesus Christ and the salvation of others. And I'm absolutely sick and tired of, of trying to convince people that the dedicating your life, everything, dedicating your life to the gospel of Jesus Christ, to the salvation of a stranger. It's one of the greatest values on earth. Nothing compares to it. And there's nothing more important in life than that. Not for me. And I really wished you guys could see the value in it and the value in the work I do. What motivates me is your value. And I know what your value is because God told me how valuable you are to him. And I believe it. I absolutely believe God. I believe you're a wonderful person, no matter who you are. No matter what you're struggling with today, you're a wonderful person. And there's so many of us in the world who are unappreciated and <laughs> people don't, don't grasp the good we offer to this world. Somebody cares for you. Somebody's praying for you. I'm praying for you. I care about you. And Jesus loves you. And sometimes that takes a while to be convinced of that being the truth, especially when you're living in a world full of such negativity. But it is the truth. It is the truth. People care about you. People are praying for you. And Jesus loves you. Don't give up. Whatever it is you have undertaken in life, don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on yourself. Wake up every morning start your morning in prayer. That's how I do it. Every morning I start my morning in prayer. And I thank God. I thank Jesus Christ for allowing me to wake up in the bed I wake up in, inside of the church I wake up in. There's nothing greater for me than to wake up every morning in, in a church, in, in a holy place, dedicated to the worship of God. That, to me is don't get any better than that. Don't give up. That's my encouraging word for you today. All right, don't give up. Don't quit on yourself. All right, and, and don't allow anybody in this world, not even your mother or your father, don't even allow them to define who you are. Find, find that definition in the Bible, from the Word of God. Mm. Yes.
big old nasty bug. Ooh. All right, guys, sun is going down. Big nasty bugs are coming out, scaring me. <laughs> I'm not a bug guy. <laughs> and so, I think I'm gonna head back to the church. God bless you. Heavenly Father, we just pray that you'd protect over those who are watching. You would encourage them and lift them up, reminding them always that it is through your promises we find the truth in your word. You love us, you care for us, and you cherish us. Give us the strength and the power to continue moving forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's enjoy the sunset for a moment. Slip sliding away. Slip sliding away. You know the near destination, the more you slip sliding away. I know. Wore his passion for his woman like a thorny crown. He says, Dolores, for I live in fear. My love for you is so overpowering, I'm afraid that I might disappear. Slip sliding away. Slip sliding away. Destination, the more you slip sliding away. I know my mom became a wife. These are the very words she uses to describe her life. She says, A good day it ain't got no rain. Set of bad days when I lie in bed and think of things that might have been. Slip sliding away. Slip sliding away. You know the near destination, the more you slip sliding away. And I knew a father. Long to tell him all the reasons for the things he'd done. He drove a long way just to explain. He kissed his boy as he lay sleeping, then he turned around and headed home again. He slipped sliding, slipped sliding away. The near destination, the more you slip sliding away. God only knows, God makes his plan. The information's unavailable. We're working our jobs, collect our pay. Believe we're gliding down the highway when in fact we're slip sliding away. Slip sliding away. Slip sliding away. You know the near destination, and boy, you slip sliding. Slip sliding away, slip sliding away. You know the near destination, the more you slip sliding away.